Hey, this is Justin with Justin Answer for Cultural Creatives, and we are fulfilling our human potential. So I have a very special guest this week that I am super excited about. Uh, you, you could see him over there to, to my right, but for a second, I'm going to just feature myself and let you know that uh, if you've ever seen the movie The Secret, if you've ever seen any follow-up to The Secret, such as what we'll be discussing today, then you'll recognize his name. But even if you haven't seen it, this is somebody you should know because of two words. I've got two words for you, efficiency and fun, because Bob Doyle, my guest today, believes that you should create your life to be efficient and fun. And efficiency and fun, those are great watchwords because sometimes we think they're mutually exclusive, but guess what? They're not. You can have a, a life, you can create your life in that way. Now, I have no idea what he's going to say. So I'm on this journey of discovery as always with you. So Bob, welcome to the show. It is amazing to have you here. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. I appreciate that. So Bob, you're in this new movie, which uh, I, anyone watching this might have recognized from a previous episode because I interviewed the man behind the movie called mm -hmm. How Thoughts Become Things. It's a great movie. Anybody should watch it. It's it's fantastic. I highly endorse and recommend that film. Of course, it's a follow-up to the movie The Secret that you're one of the stars of. But can you tell us about your contribution to the conversation in this new movie? Sure. So uh, obviously, The Secret's been out for like 15 years. I was teaching Law of Attraction stuff, uh, you know, a few years before that. And that's been my, that's kind of been my conversation and what I've been known for, trying to take the law of attraction, make it more practical, use as much science or whatever as I could, uh, but not to an overwhelming degree. However, the past couple of years, you know, after, after teaching it the way that I have, I really sort of had sort of an aha moment around how I could make this more accessible to people who, you know, kind of cross their arms at the whole energy vibration law of attraction thing, or struggle to make it work or whatever it is, because there's such a glut of information out there, especially after The Secret came out. Everybody was an expert suddenly, and they're putting out their programs, and they're putting out all kinds of just not, not nearly enough information or building false hope, false hope and that kind of thing. And when I really get down to where reality creation actually happens, it's in the moment that you make meaning out of your situation. And that moment, the meaning you give it is based on your brain and its wiring. And so if you want to change really anything about your life out there, you first have to change it in here with who you're being. And that all shows up in, in how your brain is wired. So a lot of my conversation now is more about, first of all, getting people on that page, understanding that they're basically running a program that was you know, done on autopilot. They, they unconsciously allowed themselves to be programmed because they didn't know that they could evaluate information. They just were like, okay, sure, whatever you say, yeah. And that's where their beliefs are formed. And, and then who they be, is defined by that. So if you want different results in your life, you need to, you literally need to become a different person who is alignment with taking the action necessary to get those results. So my contribution to how thoughts become things is kind of talking about that, how I've moved from just the vibrational, you know, woo woo kind of conversation, which, you know, I, I there is science behind it, but a large percentage of the population still considers it a woo-woo thing or metaphysical and trying to make it more practical where there's not any debate. People will debate the law of attraction all day long, but you don't debate science that is provable and like, look, this is how the brain works. We've proved it a zillion times. There are ways to change your wiring so you can change who you're being. And of course, extrapolate that all extrapolates out to different results in the world. That's interesting. Yeah, because uh, woo woo, or as some of my my friends would put it, your your foil hat and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, so it's really nice to hear that you know that that stuff works, and no denigration to that. But we also have and are able to approach it from a science basis and say, look, there's they're now these are coming together. So if you don't like that, that's okay. Here's the brain science behind how it works and why it works and. And um, yeah, if you could show us, you know, that's really cool. I, I love that. So I, I'd like to understand what drives you in your work in general. So um, why did you start teaching the law of attraction in the first place? Well, I, when I started out in my life, I've known from the age of 10 or 11 that what I wanted to do with my life was be a broadcaster. My dad was 
radio and television and he had this amazing voice and he got paid for talking and I'm like I'm on board you know and pushing buttons and making sound effects and creating things you know very theater of the mind type of stuff and so I always knew I wanted to do that I went to college for that my degree is in that my first job out in the world was in radio and doing that kind of thing but when I moved from where I started radio which was Athens, Georgia, where I was going to school, where I had full creative control, I could do whatever I wanted, to Atlanta, which was a major market where, you know, you don't get to do that right away, you have to work your way up and earn that right. And it was just taking too long. And I'm and I learned that I'm not a really good employee, I do not like to be told what to do, especially creatively, you know, I, so when you ask what drives me, what drives me is creative self expression. And I really, I actually believe that that's what drives everybody except creative means something different to everyone. We're, we're, we're natural born creators. We're creating all the time. And some people think, well, I mean, it's obvious if you're creating art or creating an invention, you know, physically creating, but we're actually in every moment creating our experience. And we have things inside us that we want to get out there. We want to express what our creativity, however that is, through its, whether it's through business or parenting or, you know, the arts. We want to do that. And if we don't do that, if we are not able to express ourselves creatively, then we feel very repressed. It leads to worry and it leads to anxiety and it leads to depression because everybody just wants to be who they're here to be and want to be or decide that they want to be. And so that, so the law of attraction, as I was after I left radio and I'm jumping around trying to figure out, well, then if, if it's not that, what do I want to do? And I tried all these different careers, trying to find a way that I could express myself creatively and nothing was really working. I tried lots of different things and, and on paper, they should have been working. Like, you know, I'm, I'm intelligent enough. I'm creative enough. I, I should, this should be working. So when it wasn't, I just felt like, well, there must be something else going on, something more, you know, subconscious. And that's when I started looking more in the metaphysical directions and learning about visualization and meditation and this whole concept that we could create our reality. The law of attraction was kind of mixed up in there somewhere, but it took a long time for that to come full circle for me. But to, to cut my long journey short, I stumbled upon some material that talked about sort of the quantum physics of all of this. It wasn't quite so woo-woo. It wasn't about taking these blind leaps of faith. It was like, look, your thoughts, just like everything else, in the universe are energy and they have an impact, an invisible impact, you know, on some level. But, but then now if I bring the conversation up to today, your thoughts will absolutely guide your actions, which will, which will guide your results. So anyway, I, I was so fascinated with this idea of the law of attraction and the vibration and the energy stuff and this, because it explained why things weren't working for me when they should have. And so that's where I put all of my attention. And I really wanted to be the one to bridge that gap between the woo-woo and the practical by just getting into enough of the quantum physics and pointing it up, because I'm not a quantum physicist and you don't have to be, you know, to, to get results with this stuff. But, you know, that that was my passion was was really talking to people like me who were, you know, I grew up fairly, you know, logical thinker, analytical, more of a skeptic than anything else, because my mom was, it's just what I learned. It was how I was wired, but something spoke to me about this conversation of this much bigger picture. Like I really, really got that everything is energy. And I really, it just, it, it just, with, when I had, was presented with the right information, all the lights came on. And at that point, then I was able to actually start getting results with this stuff. And I started putting together the beginnings of what became my wealth beyond reason program, which once I made this definitive decision, which I'm sure we'll talk about, then it kind of, the, the, the program itself blew up and, you know, I had a real, real passion for it. I mean, I was loving creating the content, loving talking, loving speaking, all of that stuff. And so I had a lot of content out there and that's how eventually the producers of The Secret found me and then included me as part of that project. If you watch The Secret, there's, there's many different voices, if you will, in there. There's, you know, there are the metaphysical, there's the woo-woo, there's this, you know, the hardcore scientists, and then there's just me. I'm just this average guy who got this stuff to work. So I think that that was, it was just a voice that they, they wanted in there, but that's how I got started. It was really all about how can I express myself creatively and make a living doing that? And the Wealth Beyond Reason program and all that work that I was doing for a long time was that, you know, it was creative to build a program, it was creative to do these interviews, it was creative to do all these recordings and meditations and, and build a, an online business that I always wanted to do. So for a long time, that, that was, that's what drove me. That's really cool. Because uh, uh, it's a good fit, too, for, you know, the people listening, because uh, cultural creatives, there's, what, what, about 50, 80 million 
people who might classify as that throughout the world. And I don't have time to go into all the details of what that means. You can look it up on Wikipedia. However, one of the keystones of the word is, is the word creative. It's right in there. Creativity, uh, and whether that's through the arts or self-expression or some form of expression and communication is a key, is a key to what people like us do. And I can certainly relate to this whole idea of being a bad employee because I, I, I'm probably uh, the worst at it, you know, it's, it's, which is funny to say, because, you know, when I, when I do what I, what I do normally off camera, which is uh, consulting in, in business and consulting with government and, you know, various things like that. Um, I have processes and systems developed. One of them has to deals with employees. You know, I have mm -hmm. this methodology I put together, which fixes the problem employee and keeps you out of court, saves you money and losses and lawsuits, and has really had a massive impact on the organizations I've worked with, some big, some small, and additionally makes people feel like a weight's been lifted. So it's kind of a personal development thing. And I have, I have it rebranded as well. So I have two versions of the same thing because it does, it does a body good and a spirit good, but it also actually has a material impact in the workplace by taking your liability, who's either stealing from the stock room or bypassing safety procedures. These are real examples. Uh, and actually turns them into an asset on the team, either a top performer or one of the top performers on the team. So it's funny that you, you say that, but all, with all of that said, that's not because I figured out how I can be the best employee in the world. And so now I'm, I'm teaching other employees to do that's not at all where I come from, because I'm actually a pretty lousy employee, because I'm a very creative person. And I could be, could be called an intrapreneur, which is a nice business buzzword. But I don't know if that's really true, because I think what really is true is I just, I don't like to be told what and how to create. I like to yeah. create and originate the ideas and maybe have others help me because I enjoy, I love collaborating with people, but you know, I'm not exactly the obedient little dude who does that, which is of course, there's nothing wrong with people who prefer that because that's of course wonderful to have people who you know, know how to take orders and execute them, uh, whether they're in the military or civilian life, it's really great to have people who can follow instructions. But me, I'm not. So I can totally relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of people who are listening or watching today can also relate to that exact phenomenon of, yeah, I'm not really the guy. So that would be very valuable for them to connect with you and your programs uh, just on that level, on that level of, well, you know, if Bob can do it, you know, you can do it too. You, you don't have to be forced into anything. If you're creative, you're creative. Well, a lot of that, a lot of that attitude I had was youth. I mean, I, I've definitely gone through periods of time as an entrepreneur for however many years it's been, you know, you go through times where I, like I get exhausted doing it myself. And sometimes you just want somebody to tell you what to do. But the, the tricky part is finding the right person who really gets you, your personality and your style to give you that kind of direction. Because if the wrong person tries to give you direction, if you don't have a respect for them, or if you don't feel like they get you, then you're, you'll probably resist that. And, and, you know, I certainly did. But there are some times, of course, when, you know, you have to, to let go of control. And it's very, it's, and it took me a very long time to do that. But, but once you do, once you find the right people, and there's that journey too of trust and getting burned a couple of times and go, oh, forget it, I'm going to do it myself. But you can't scale that way, really. And it's just like, why are you doing what you do? Well, hopefully it's to have fun and, and enjoy yourself. And as the business got, you know, more complex, or I wanted to reach more things or, or take different tactics, I didn't want to have to learn how to do like Facebook marketing, for example, Facebook ads, I, I, I looked at it a few times and I just shut down. It's like, that's not how my brain works. So I must go find somebody to help with that. So it's not like that I'm their employee, but there is still that amount of even creative control that I would give up. Like, well, I would do the video this way. And they say, no, do it this way because it, it gets results. And there's, and there's really is something very freeing about letting go of that too. So it's, it's a dance and it comes in cycles and, and you just learn to trust your intuition. I mean, that's, that's, you know, I had lots of lessons, lots of really hard lessons over the course of my journey here, particularly right after the secret came out about following your intuition, as opposed to getting excited because someone's promising you the moon. 
you know, and, and so that's, but again, that's just all part, part of the growing process and you learn and you make mistakes and you just keep going, you know, you have to be tuned into yeah. who you want to be and the impact you want to make in the world. And so it's, it's an ongoing journey and I've still got lots of that ahead of me, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I mean, it's been, you said, I think 15 years since The Secret came out. So then how would you describe the impact of that project? Let, let's say on you, you, because, because that I mean, I was there, I was living in LA at the time and I remember it came out and it was a huge hit. It was a bestseller, it was this, mm -hmm. whether it was the book or the movie. And it was, it was a massive impact. So we, we kind of know what it had impact, you know, on people and all that. But what about you? What impact did it have on you and your business, your well, life? And Well, so obviously I got a ton of new exposure because I had built my program for, you know, with three years or whatever before the seat, before I was approached about that. And I had gained, you know, I really turned everything around. I'd gotten out of tons of debt. I'd gotten a, I'd, I'd built a nice little following an email list. Now, internet marketing is way different back then. It was a lot easier to send email and get people to read it and open it and take action on it. Now it's, it's a whole different game. And in fact, that game changed right around the time the secret came out. So when the secret came out and, and they're featuring, they're featuring all of the teachers faces on the front cover and they're selling our products. I mean, you know, the business exploded. And it really took me out of my, like, I was very happy just to kind of be hidden away because radio is a very much a hidden away. I just wanted to be on a microphone, do my voices, do my crazy stuff, but I didn't have to go out and be with people. And, 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 and that's how it was kind of running with, with what I was doing there until the secret came out. Well, now I'm being invited to speak at this thing and that thing and get on a stage. And I'm like, okay, I can't say no. I mean, that would be ridiculous. This is a tremendous opportunity. So so I started doing that and I realized I actually liked that. I liked being on stage and I liked the interaction afterward and I liked meeting people and, and feeling, you know, being able to experience the impact that, that the work was having. Because sometimes when you're just digital out, you get your testimonial emails or whatever, but when you're looking in somebody's face and you can see and feel the emotion and stuff that the impact that you or the project you're involved with had, I mean, that's, that's a whole different level of, you know, satisfaction. So, oh, yeah. but with all that good new income and new exposure, I definitely had major challenges because I, I, for various reasons, including some of my own stuff, you know, I felt like, okay, well now I need to be like those people, like Jack and Bob and all these people who'd been in the personal development world for decades. I was in it three years. You know, the fact that I was in that film was a freaking miracle because who was I? I mean, no, hardly anybody knew me except, you know, my customers and, and whatever. I was not a well-known name like those guys. So I kept, I had all these ideas that were, that were fueled by a lot of marketers coming at me like, hey, we're going to take you to the next level. Let us help you do this thing. And so I kept thinking, well, I need to be like that. And so if you look at, if you look at like the marketing I did back then around 2000, anywhere between 2007 and 2010, it's a very stiff version of me. It's very, you know, hair slicked back, no glasses, just sort of, you know, hi, I'm Bob Doyle, one of the featured teachers in the film and book, The Secret, and then just, you know, message. And there was none of my, I mean, very little of my personality coming through. And I felt like that was an expectation that was put on me from, the public. Nobody told me that except for there, there was one instance and it did make a, it made an impact. But, you know, in 2010, I got my first invitation to go speak overseas in Russia and to a group of 10,000 people, which was like, well, nothing like I'd ever done before. And at that time, I was just starting to experiment with incorporating uh, the ukulele into my speaking to, uh, uh, to illustrate the point of creative self-expression and things like that, which is a, you know, a huge passion of mine. And I brought that up to the folks who, you know, had brought me out to, who were bringing me out to Russia. And they're like, no, no, we just want the guru. And that has been the pattern ever since. So whenever, and I still go speak there from time to time, but I can't, I can't really, you know, you can't use jokes. You can't use humor. It just flies right over. It doesn't, they, they want the message and, and even more so they want Bob Doyle from the secret. They, they want the, 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 it's a status thing to some degree, you know, so, so, but that, that idea that I needed to be something like that began to really suck the fun out of it for me. And, and it caused a lot of challenges. Plus I was taking some really bad advice uh, from a marketing standpoint, trying things that were working for other industries like internet marketing and trying to translate that and move it into 
personal development. So my voice to my email list and all that suddenly just changed. And I'm making offers and doing things business-wise that were not at all how I had done them before. They didn't feel, again, this is where I, the big lesson on my intuition, I'm going, well, that's not me, but they must know more than me because they're marketers. They've been doing this and they've got success with these other people. But those people were internet marketers, marketing, internet marketing. It's a totally different conversation, a totally different energy, a totally different feel, totally different results. And I was trying to use their strategies and man, did it backfire. It backfired so freaking huge that I lost eventually like two thirds of my email list. And that oh, that's two thirds of your income. And, and I felt like, well, and, and at that time also, um, you know, I, I, I was divorced in 2012. And so during those years, it was kind of tricky. So there was a lot going on in my mind. I, I was just kind of feeling a little bit lost and I didn't have a really good sense yeah. of identity. And I wasn't sure how was I going to have fun with this career, if you will. How can I return to having fun um, like I was doing before The Secret, just being me and writing in my voice and whatever, how can I go back to that when I had all these ideas of what the yeah. expectations were and all these other, and, and how much the, the marketing uh, world changed. So that was, that was a real struggle, real struggle for me until live streaming came around. When live streaming like Periscope and these other platforms where mm -hmm. I could just go live and be Bob, that, be, that was the beginning of the change of everything. To getting so do back you do to this clubhouse, fun. this new th phenomenon. I'm I, I'm on it. I still can't figure it out. I'm like, what do I do with this? I'm in there, but I'm like, I know I'm going to. I've been resistant right. because it's like another freaking platform, really. Yeah, yeah. me too. And and um, but you know, all of my colleagues are on it. Uh, Tracy was my partner in life. She's freaking addicted to it. People spend <laughs> hours. I see people like they're on there twenty four seven, and and I get it. But I'm like, but I have been extremely resistant to it. Yeah. But when I think about it, though, it really is kind of a back to basics type of thing. It has a different feel that's probably way more who I am. Although live streaming on video is, is I, I mean, I, I absolutely love it. And I can do all kinds of creative things with, uh, I have the Bob Doyle show, which has nothing really to do with personal development. And every once it's in just, a while, I see you do this thing and you've got these little animated animals jumping across you as you're, as you're on the live stream. I'm like, how the heck does he do yeah. that? What, that's yeah, magic. It's, <laughs> it's just, it's just, I like playing. I just like yeah. playing with the technology. It's just an extension of, of what I thought I was going to do in radio, which I mean, now mm -hmm. I can do visual elements. And, and so it really taps into, and I push the technology like crazy, but that's, that is truly like more for fun. If I'm doing mm -hmm. straight up law of attraction type coaching, it'll just be a background, a lower third, and I'll put their comments on the screen and all that kind of stuff. But the point is, is that it allowed me to create real relationships with people in real time, not through email, that they weren't opening, but that they got to see my face. They got to learn my personality. And what's great about that is that, yes, when I got, when I started to get a little silly or add more humor into what I was doing, there were absolutely people that I lost because they didn't, right. okay. you know, but, but there were also people that I gained and those are the people that I want anyway, right? The people that mm -hmm. I can just be me and they really get me. And those, when, when those are the people who will stay in a coaching program I've got for like three years as opposed to trying it out of, of for a month or whatever and going, oh, well, I didn't know he was a goofball. I'm out of here or whatever. I mean, I'm still getting you results, but if that's not your style, it's not your style. And it's not going to be fun for either one of us to work together if you don't like to have fun with it. Because exactly. people take this stuff so freaking seriously. I can't tell you how many times I would get emails if someone just purchased the program or whatever, and they'd say, you know, I'm going to work real hard on this. I'm super serious about this. I'm like, okay, let that be the last time you say that. You're going to have fun with this. And you're going to play through this because we, by nature, are playful beings. We're creative beings. If you approach law of attraction type stuff with this heavy energy, I've got to make it done. That's that's going to be the vibe of everything you do. And you're never going to really feel accomplished. Even if you get the thing you've wanted to attract or whatever, you've still got this serious nature and you're going to be like, oh, I got to keep working hard to get it. You know, again, it goes right back to who are you going to be in this process of transformation? Do you want to be serious and heavy about it? Like you're going to solve all your problems with this technique? Or are you going to have fun? Are you going to define yourself as somebody who this is easy? This is light. This is a truly fun, creative process. And that's who that is who I prefer to work with because they're going to keep doing that if it's fun. If it's not fun, if it feels real serious or whatever, if they have unrealistic expectations set by the personal development industry in general, you know, they're going to get they're going to get frustrated. So my first conversation with people is not what do you want? It's who do you want to be? And that's a challenging question, but it is absolutely essential. 
Yeah, and it's it's interesting you said that for a few a few things. Number one, because I relate to it personally. I uh, I know I have like everybody else facets to my personality, and I can emphasize one or the other as the situation requires. When when I'm in you know a board meeting with the charity that I I'm a chairman of. Um, it's a, a different, you know, I don't goofball around. However, I do introduce humor because humor is very important in the boardroom, especially if things are getting a little serious. So, but, uh, but I obviously emphasize one facet of my personality. Now in my background, I'm a Disney man. I worked at Disneyland and, you know, I, I, I still do some work with them. I'm still on the board of directors of the alumni club to this day. So for me, that's an important part of my heritage emotionally in this lifetime. And so, those things will always come out. Now, what al also always comes out is, you know, the fact that on occasion at certain theme park locations, I would do the voice of Mickey behind the scenes on the telephone. And so sometimes people, sometimes very serious people, like when I'm in like a meeting that I was expecting would be dead serious, you know, I'll get leaned over and say, could you do Mickey for me? I'm like, really? I can't do it for you sitting across the table, though, because I took an oath not to spoil the magic, but maybe I can get Mickey to record a little audio and send it to you on Facebook Messenger if you want. And so I always do it that way, and I'm a little coy with it. But but those things, I, I can't delete them for my personality. And so or there's always right. going to be an aspect of fun, an aspect of performance. I'm, a, I'm still a member of the Screen Actors Guild, I've, you know, because that, that was my career when I first got out of college. It, those things are not going to go away. The performer, the musician, I play piano. I, I sat down at the piano at age four, classical. I wish I could do a string instrument like the ukulele. That's amazing. I'd love, you can't carry a piano on stage, but you could carry no. a ukulele on guitar. Yes. But yeah. So that's not going to go away. The musician, the actor. So it's, it's interesting because for me, you can emphasize facets, but to delete them and try, and I've seen people do this in workplaces where I'm like, this person is a complete automaton, a robot, an Android, He's a weird, stiff, like really a repellent energy. And yet, I see them on Facebook late, like years later. And I'm like, well, actually, he's a cool guy. If he only let that show a little bit at work, people would gravitate towards him. Very, very interesting for me. But the other thing you said, which I thought was really interesting, which I think has an impact on everybody really, is when you said that that seriousness, that level. So you've heard, you've heard of it, obviously, but I think you guys who's, who are listening and watching may or may not have heard of the levels of consciousness. Um, Rupert Sheldrake's work those levels no there's so many no i'm not All gonna right, be able okay to so he's he's got this really elaborate work he's uh, very you might want to look it up i think you would really dig the work it's very well researched from a scientific basis he's a professor in a university and a really acclaimed one and he did this extensive research on levels of consciousness and one interesting thing that came out of it is the fact that to release uh, to release things to be able to do that you have to be at, at a higher vibration level so that level of fun cheerfulness you know enthusiasm that level is actually necessary to release things to be able to let go of what people are coming to work on with you because as you descend down that vibration level you eventually reach this level around where you hold on to things and that's that level of that extreme seriousness could be also manifesting as anger or hatred impossible to let go of things this this is one of the major reasons why various modalities like TFT or EFT or that and, I, and I'm trained at the at the highest you know the the voice technology level of thought field therapy so I, I can do all the magic however I'm also I can recognize that all of these different modalities if someone is at that level where they hold on to everything including material objects and people they will not let the the the, the cure won't stick it'll come back because they're they are holding on to it they need to be raised up into that lighter and higher things. Interestingly enough, as you descend even lower to that, into the sort of passive aggressive type of thing, these people actually will prefer lies. These people actually will gravitate towards untruth. They don't want anything to do with the truth. So then it becomes even more impossible to let anything go because they will never address the real cause and the real source. And so it becomes really essential for everybody, whether they work with you or me or anybody in the world, 
to raise from that sort of super serious stuck level because that's the level where you just hold on to stuff. And if you've come to me to let, or to you to let go of something and change your life, you're going to have to lighten up a little bit and make that energy lighter. And that's, that's researched. That's not Justin's opinion. That is very well researched and documented, which is why I shared, you know, the, the work of Rupert Cheldrake, which you might be interested in, because that's the sort of the scientific documentation without the woo woo uh, scenario to it. Uh, of why that is and how that works. So I find that extremely fascinating. I, I, but still, even, even so, I think that the con when you talk about consciousness, that is still a conversation that it's, it's, it feels invisible to, to yeah. some people. And so but all of what you just said, it's going to eventually translate into brain wiring and chemistry. And we get addicted to these chemicals. I mean, we, we, people just have no idea how driven they are by their chemistry and the chemistry that they are addicted to, the hormones that are produced by certain thoughts and feelings that they get addicted to, even if they don't really feel that good. It, even if they're disempowering, people get oh. empowered by proving their limb by arguing for their limitation. It's a twisted, sick, hmm. you know, in disempowerment. But people like to be right about how limited things are. They get a they get this yeah. little burst of 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 uh, dopamine or whatever whatever chemical it is that gives them that feeling that they are used to, accustomed to, and freaking addicted to. And, and because they persist in that, because they persist in that addiction and the same thoughts over and over they wire themselves. So there is actual biology to this whole thing that shows up. So that's why, again, they're addicted to this. This is who, who they know themselves to be. And the reason that they stay that way is because they don't really know the beauty of feeling a different way. Like they're, they, they're used to this chemistry. They're used to, mm. to this. But if they could taste what, how, how great it is to have the, the boost and the empowerment feeling and the dopamine without all the other crap in it, you know, but that comes from, they have to decide who they want to be. And it has to be inspiring. Transformation is not just this simple thing. It, it depending on where you are on that scale, it can be, a, it can be quite a significant journey uh, through either the levels of consciousness, but also to break yourself of that addiction and to rewire, literally create new neural pathways, which takes persistence and consistency and, 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 and you know, of, of different thoughts and different actions and different ways of being. People will not do that if they don't get the fact that they're gonna get a reward that's greater than what they've got now on the other side. So, because they, they're used to this and that is an unknown. So there, it's way too easy just for them to slip back into, they're gonna go, they're gonna go back to their wiring. If somebody or something from the outside who can see it from a different point of view doesn't say, hey, you're doing it. You're on autopilot right now. Let's choose a different thought right now. What's something you could do? What's an action you could take that's different than what you're normally taking, whether that's a thought or an external action, because you have to start, you have to start the rewiring process. And it takes a, a minute. You know, rewiring doesn't, you don't build neuro, new neural pathways in an instant. There's temporary release of new neural transmitters and stuff like that that can give you that temporary boost. So you go to an event, you get all excited, you go, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna change because there's different chemistry in your brain. But if you don't keep it going, the neural pathways will not actually form. And so you, the, the extra chemicals will just sort of go off and you'll go right back to your decades of wiring. You are so hardwired. So, but, but when you think about anything that you've done in your life and people stop because it gets uncomfortable, that that's mm -hmm. basically it. They stop because they're uncomfortable. They get scared. There's the unknown, but what they don't realize is that's everything you've ever learned. Everything you've ever learned worth learning has involved some discomfort. You fell down when you're trying to walk. You didn't talk right. You fell off the bike. Every, you, you made mistakes when you were learning to cook all of it, but they don't think about it as like, well, I'm just going to quit. You know, I fell down twice. God clearly doesn't want me to walk. I mean, but, but that idea that the universe doesn't want something for you is pervasive in the law of attraction conversation. And, and people allow themselves to get stopped because they quote unquote fail a couple of times. Well, I guess the universe doesn't want it for me. It's such freaking nonsense. Do you want it? Can you see it? Do you feel it? Do you understand how you can create more value in the planet by becoming that? Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. You're growing new things and you've got wiring that says, no, this is who you are. This is who you are. So it feels completely contrary to your your gut, your intuition and everything to go this way. But if you can, if, if through practice, through whether it's meditation or just constant visualization, vision boards, I don't care what tool you use, 
If you can tune into how great it's going to be when you get there, if you can see in your mind, in your imagination, which is where all creation begins on an ongoing basis and start acting slowly but surely with support, hopefully, you will start to build new neural pathways and it will all become second nature, just like riding a bike is and talking and all those other things. It's no different than anything else you've learned. However, because of the way the personal development industry in general positions stuff like this, hey, 60 days, 90 days, seven days, money back guaranteed. You're never going to transform that way if you have those unrealistic expectations, because it might take somebody seven days to do the rewiring they need. But depending on where you are on that scale and what your wiring is, it could take a, a considerable amount of time longer. So to be able to stick with it, you have to know exactly why you're being, why you're going there. You have to remind yourself on an ongoing basis. Does it seem cumbersome? Sure, at first maybe it is, but as I said, the wiring, the, the, the science is there. The wiring will take place. It will not always feel cumbersome, but what's more, what's more uncomfortable? The, the, the process of growing and getting there or just staying stuck where you are and making excuses for why you can't do things and point to all the proof that you've attracted and will continue to attract when you justify why you're where you are. Yeah, so now people reading the secret, watching the secret or any, any other source for this information. And I'm sure you've heard about it not working for people and, yeah. or you mentioned earlier consistency or how it's inconsistent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, similar things. So you mentioned these things, consistency that, so what you just said there about the wiring and, and, and the comfort, I, I thought of an analogy. Well, if you're going to sprout a pair of wings out your back, <laughs> it's going to hurt my, it might hurt. It'll be certainly be uncomfortable if, if you're, especially if you've got a shirt on, be like, oh, what's that? So, you know, the question is of why some people succeed with this and some people fail with this. Is that why? Is that, is that they just don't stick with it? Right. That's it. They don't know why they're doing it yet. See, the problem is, is that people will watch The Secret and then they want to use the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. They want to try to make it work to solve all their problems. So all of their attention is on their problems, which keeps them exactly stuck with being who they are. I want this person to have their problem solved. Instead of creating a whole new version of yourself, what would it like create in your imagination a life where these problems don't exist and then see what happens when you start taking action. But when you focus on all that stuff, th there's the whole woo-woo mentality that I'm sure that I taught forever. Yeah. Well, if you focus on the problem, then you're putting out the vibration, you're going to attract more of the problem. Yeah. But you're also going to take, you're going to continue to take consistent action with the person who, per, who perpetuates the problem. It's all very practical. It's very, it's a very grounded conversation, which is why I'm saying now you don't have to believe in the law of attraction at all and stop trying to make it freaking work. If you have been struggling with it for uh, even just a few years, stop. Stop, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to make change happen out there. You know, I'm going to move energy. I'm going to move the forces of nature and then I'll change. No, you won't. That's not how it works. You absolutely, because you're, the stuff may come to you. You may attract it. But if you're still being the same person, you're going to take the same freaking action you've always taken, which is going to pull it away or you're going to quit or it's going to be like, oh, I'm freaking out because that because you're in that old container. You have to start expanding from the inside out. And then, yes, the law of attraction will definitely work on that invisible level, bringing the situations and the circumstances for you to take action and make meaning out of, but will move you along. It's perfectly possible to attract those situations, but if you're still being the old person, you, you're not going to know what to do. You're yeah. not going to take the appropriate action and you're not going to get the results. Yeah, and that sounds a lot more like uh, the, the old, the, the really old school, the uh, law of attraction person before before this well before the secret minus of course the really the the heavy religiosity uh you sound a lot more like neville goddard who mm -hmm. talked a lot about it's you've got to be a new person before and and i think that's in, that's really interesting that it's in alignment but but what got you interested in rewiring what 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 like well it's pointed it's interesting there. What, it's interesting that you mentioned Goddard because he was a big part of it. Now, I, I mostly talk about when I reread The Science of Getting Rich Again, which mm -hmm. is a very old book, and they didn't talk about neuroplasticity or rewiring, but the emphasis was on the consistency of being who you want to be and acting in alignment yeah. with that. And you don't have the luxury of basking in a negative thought just because you're wired to do that. You know, it's you can justify your lack of results all day long, but you're just going to make them persist. So the reading, um, 
reading the science of getting rich again and and in a whole, and getting it in a whole new way after teaching it the way I had for 20 years it really made all of that make much more sense and gave me a whole new way to talk about it at the same time I started re reading the Goddard stuff which I absolutely recommend to everyone no, but if you dig deep and you do have a religious background you're going to probably have some resistance but it is amazing stuff and it is the essence of what makes it work you know it's not talking about neuro neuroscience or anything like that it's just like do this and it will work which is absolutely true again there's no need to understand any of this or believe any of it but your actions and who you're being that's what's going to create the results so it's helpful like it was helpful for me to understand how the law of attraction worked back then but it's not it's understanding it is not what is getting the results. It's who I'm being as a result of my understanding. So it wasn't so necessary, it, in other words. It wasn't necessary. It was a well, help. It was necessary. Thing. It, it, it was necessary for me because it was mm -hmm. a part of my journey. It it, it okay. allowed me to look at okay, not making myself so wrong, like I'll never get out of this situation. Like I it it was the first thing that said, okay, I've got some internal thoughts going. I wasn't thinking about wiring so much. I was thinking more you know, my beliefs that are floating around out there, but it came down to the wiring. So in essence, what I was telling myself was I've got this wiring about money and success and I need to change that wiring. So what will I do to do that? Well, I'm going to take all this basic stuff. I'm learning about the law of attraction, like the concept of a vision board and this type of thing, the, the things that most people start with the law of attraction. But I think I just, some people, some people struggle with it because they're, they're thinking of it as a, as magic. Like I'm going to make yeah. this vision board and then it's just going to appear. Well, if you watch, well, if you certainly, build a vision it's board. It's certainly positioned slightly that way when you watch the is. movie where you absolutely. see like absolutely conjuring up stuff. Is. And yeah. then they did, and then they had the genie metaphor and all of that stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I totally get why people walked away with the magical well, thinking aspect. Even I got stuff. one. Look at that. It's nice though. <laughs> That's nice. That's a cool thing to have. But, um, but yeah, I mean, so yes, I, I do get why people. Yeah got the magical thinking aspect out of it and when and people who are prone to that and want it to be super easy and mm -hmm. maybe are, are challenged with taking action or don't know who they, they're, they're going to cling to that and they will spend freaking decades trying to make that work rather than yeah. changing who they're being oh yeah absolutely they, they will do that and, and you often you also often say that your sticking points is actually your greatest gift so this is obviously one major sticking point i certainly have had loads of sticking points in my life you know i i'm not a spring chicken i'm in my middle ages now i you know so i'll be 44 this year and i'm looking at it thinking holy shit how did i get you know I don't feel 44. I don't feel a day over 28. But anyway, that's a whole other story. So you often say that those sticking points are a great gift. Now, yes. for me, that's a bit confusing. So could you elaborate on that? Because yeah. I, I know most of the time that frustrates people, myself included. Right. Because, But the reason it's a gift is that I, it is identifying the limits of your wiring. It says, oh, this is where I am stuck. This is where my programming, I, I've reached the limit. So this is the area I need to work on. This is an area I need to expand in my imagination. How do I, how would I rather be about this situation when I'm helping people to determine who they want to be, which is not easy. They, mm -hmm. they sometimes, because they're so who they are, it's hard to think outside the box of that because it's so, it's so different. It, it's literally almost impossible for some people to do it. So I look at like, let's start with the, the times in your day when you feel disempowered. When you get that familiar feeling of I can't or whatever it is, when, when, when you feel yourself dropping in that emotional scale or whatever it is, and then you, if when that, I mean, that's the greatest skill set in this whole thing is learning to be, to become conscious in the moment and go into observation mode. I talk about that a lot in how thoughts become things, because at that point, then you have a choice, but it is not always easy to jump out into observation mode when you're in it, because your chemistry is going crazy and you're absolutely yeah. led by that. You are led by your chemistry and you're led by the, the programming. So it takes a bit of practice to, to get out into observation mode, cut off from the emotion of it and think, what would, the, what would the more empowered version or better version, however you want to label it, what would they do in this situation? How would I like to respond? If I get angry in this situation, how would I prefer to respond? If I'm feeling like a victim in this situation, how would a person who does not feel like a victim respond in this moment? If I'm making this mean that the universe doesn't want it for me, what is a person who just sees that this is feedback that I can make an adjustment? It's a gift. It's a freaking gift when you make a mistake. 
what you call a mistake. You're just getting feedback. We label it as mistakes. We mm -hmm. label it as failure. All it is is feedback. It gives you more information and, and nothing of any consequence on the planet would be here technologically or otherwise if everybody thought like that. If everybody thought, oh, two or three tries, it doesn't work. Well, I guess it's just impossible. It's not for me. No, you got to have that strong vision so that you will keep going, keep going, take the feedback, make the adjustments, and then you will get there. There are countless stories of that. The famous one is Edison, but there's a zillion <laughs> others. I was just thinking of Edison. He tried 10,000 times and failed, And except he said, no, I just found 10,000 ways it wouldn't work. Now, can you imagine if Thomas Edison had stopped at like 8,349 and said, look, it's been 8,000 versions. It's not working, period. End of story. I'm shutting down. We would have never had the light bulb. Nah, so Tesla somebody, would have done it. You know, Tesla yeah, because it's, it. yeah, if somebody else would have done it, but not Edison. So, because, so right. then he wouldn't have had the kudos for it. So that's, that's what's interesting. So what you just said there, is that how we can effectively begin the rewiring process and assure success for ourselves? Is that how we yeah. do it by, by we, taking that step to the third person, you know, or whatever, and then saying, well, how would someone who masters this or whatever react or do this? Yeah. Or and whatever? then you try it on. Okay. I mean, and the, the mindset, that's the mindset part, like, and that's mm -hmm. a major accomplishment just to be able to go into observation mode and realize that you're, 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 uh, mm -hmm. you're running on your programming right now. You're being swept through the chemicals and that you're about to respond based on that, right? That is a major accomplishment. But again, results don't occur until you take action with that knowledge. You know, you, you must yeah. now behave and it's going to feel super uncomfortable. It's yeah. just going to, and you're going to feel kind of really weird and unnatural. And you may be like, what are people going to say? And they will, by the way, people will respond. When you show up differently, people will respond differently. And that's another whole part of the equation because so many people don't transform. They don't go through the process and uh, because either they go up against their own stuff or somebody else in their life is threatened by it and starts telling them that they can't or shouldn't or won't hmm. accomplish this task. And so, so many people are people pleasers and they don't want to upset this or that relationship that they, they basically just acquiesce and they sacrifice, they literally sacrifice their life, the life they want, the life they could have so that this person and this person will be more comfortable. But guess what? They're not comfortable. If they're, tell, if they're, if they're taking the time out of their day to limit your progress, that means they're unhappy. A happy person and a truly <laughs> successful person does not have the time nor desire to tell other people that they can't do something. They will yeah. encourage them. So if there's anybody in your life telling you why you can't do something, that's on them 100%. Because whatever, they're using, they're using what evidence they see of you and they're running it through their meaning machine, what they have true, decided is true or false for them or whatever, and then they're feeding it back to you. You don't have to listen to any of it unless something resonates with you, but, but you'll know. I mean, if it feels bad, you just gotta look at their life. Who are these people to tell me how to be happy? What, what do they know? I don't even know my capability. How the hell would they know? Yeah, and even if they're influential or famous, you know, cause I've had this happen to me where I'm like, oh my God, maybe, Maybe I suck because this person is, you know, famous and rich and, you know, and, 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 you know, uh, yeah, which does not then, equate to happiness. Yeah. Not, not only that, but like you just said, they don't know all the factors in your life and all the different, the, what do they know? They, they don't right. know you intimately well that you know, they're just making observations and it's going through their own filters and their own. And even junk. more important, even more importantly, you don't necessarily know yourself because you're about to redefine yourself. You know who you're going to yeah. be, but you don't know the, the unlimited potential of this person you're about to create. You get to create what you get to create, whatever you want. You can be who you want to be. It's a decision. And, and how long it will take to get there depends on what that decision is, how much rewiring you have to do, et cetera, and how driven you are to take the action necessary to, to, to achieve it. Excellent. So Bob, look, we're, we're nearing our time. And so I wanted to just make sure that I, uh, in case I'm sure many people listening or watching want to find out more, and you're very easy to find all over social media. Your name is Bob Doyle. You're, you're not an unknown entity out there. Uh, you also have a website, meetbobdoyle.com. What's the mm -hmm. best place that you'd like to right now send people to say, I want you to go look at this? 
so there's two two things that I two? that I, I think is really where the, so the meetbobdoyle.com slash rewire that okay. will give you that that will get, there's a it's just a free webinar that kind of just explains just gives the basics of this rewire stuff and hopefully we'll give some folks some ahas around what it's going to take to start that rewiring process we've talked on some of it here we just go deeper in depth one of the things i'm doing now though is three times a week monday wednesday and friday at 9 a.m pacific on instagram i'm going live and i'm doing 10 to 15 minutes on various topics some are brought some are suggested by the people who are watching some are just what are in my heart to do i just a couple of weeks ago i went through the whole book the secret and I found that, and this is that series, the series now is still there on the Instagram TV. You could watch it. And I went through all of my quotes in the book that were taken from the film. And I asked the question, would I still say this? Right. Is this, oh, interesting. Is this something I would still say or how would I do a twist Are on there that? Are there any no's? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. It's mostly in the way I would say it. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff with the secret, the, the context, like there's there's a part in there. There's a couple of parts in there where I say something like, I, I may say like attracts like, which is like the opposite of what I say. And, and, but it's the context that which they, that, you know, they needed it here. So they put it here and I'm like, well, I, I didn't, that's not what I meant. So it gave me a chance to qualify that. And then the next week I went through and I picked out some of my favorite uh, contributions from some of the other people, you know, because there are a lot nice. of them. I would not, I would not teach. I would not go down that road. Mostly not because it's not necessarily true, but it's absolutely not my style or way of teaching, nor yeah. would I think my audience would be, would have, that would impact them because it's either too magical thinking or just, it's just esoteric. And like, what are you even saying right here? There, unfortunately, I think there's a few of those in there and some of mine come across that way because of the context. So it was fun to go through and have that opportunity to just sort of clarify yeah, 15 years awesome. later. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. So I think, I, I really think not only me, but you, everyone watching and listening should actually go there and check those out because that sounds really cool. So let me be revision, clear because I've got a couple of, of the past. <laughs> I've got a couple of Instagram accounts. So it's the Bob Doyle from the secret. That's Bob Doyle from the secret. Couldn't be easier oh, okay. to remember. That's the one where you go there. I've got a couple of That's others, the one where you find one. it. But I think also if you just look it up and do a search on Instagram TV, you'll find you'll find them all probably relatively easily because that search engine is pretty robust. So and probably, but Bob there's Doyle. also there's also Instagram TV of Bob Doyle show stuff, which is silly and not silly at stuff, all yeah. what we're talking about here. So that if I want to be specific, if they want Bob this Doyle type of information, it's Bob Doyle from the secret. From the secret. The Fantastic. Whole thing so we'll, yeah. we'll make sure we 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 go to the right place and that we yep. do that. So Bob, hey, thanks so much for being here today. It's been really cool to have you. Thank you for teaching us some really valuable things and lessons and also you know, pulling back the curtain and letting us into your world just a little bit as a human being and you're sharing a bit of your journey and stuff. It's really great to get to know you. So thank you so much, Bob, for being here. Sure. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> Fantastic. So remember, this is Justin. Justin answers the podcast and it's for cultural creatives who are fulfilling our human potential. So thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. Oh, there you go. All right.